Metal Jesus here and I'm back again this week with a really fun video. See, I often get asked what are some of my favorite games of all time across my entire collection. The thing is, this is pretty difficult to do because I've been collecting for about 30 years and I have a little over 3,000 video games. So what I thought I would do is come up with a list for you guys today that covers both PC games, consoles, and everything in between. Let's take a look. Number 10. Oh man, what to say about Metroid Zero Mission other than this is the game that made me fall in love with the Game Boy Advance. I had the Game Boy Advance and up until this point I was like, yeah, most of the games are pretty good on this, but it took this game to really turn that around. I played this game to death. I was blown away by it. For one, it's just a really excellent platforming game that has some really excellent ideas that I think it just executes very well. For instance, the levels are so interesting to explore, yet they're blocked off until you get the certain upgrade that you desperately need. And it seems like every suit or weapon upgrade happens at just the right point. It's so perfectly balanced because you'll be sitting there going, where do I go next? Like, why can't I get through this door? Or, man, I just wish I had the ability to latch onto this ledge up here. And then before you know it, you'll find that one upgrade in that little nook and cranny that you've been looking for the entire time, and now you have power grip. It's just the thing that you need, or maybe a special cannon, or a special attack. It's just, I don't know, it's just something about this game, it's just so perfectly balanced. Also, the controls and the difficulty in this game, I feel is really well balanced, especially for me, because I don't have a ton of experience playing these, these old school 2D platforming games, yet I'm able to get through the game and it's very satisfying. Now, I know a lot of people actually prefer Metroid Fusion, which is the game that came out two years before Zero Mission. But for me, that one's just a little bit more kind of bright. And I don't, I mean, it's a good game, don't get me wrong. But it's probably because I discovered Zero Mission first. But I definitely prefer that one, although both are excellent and highly recommended in my collection. Number nine. You guys know that I play guitar, I have since the 1990s, so I appreciate music rhythm games, especially by Harmonix, because they've made some excellent ones over the years. And while I like the Guitar Hero series, they nailed it with the Rock Band series. And when I say I like the Rock Band series, I'm, I've, I've got a lot of them. I've got Rock Band 2, I've got the Green Day edition, of course I got the, uh, the Beatles edition, I've even got the Lego edition. That's how obsessed I am with this. But Rock Band 3 is the pinnacle. I play this game all the time. Either it's at home with the guitar, with those little plastic guitars, or on the drums. Uh, my buddy Drunken Master Paul has the pro instruments with the keyboards. Rebecca sings. It's just such a great, great game, and it's perfect for parties. They nailed the aspect of playing music with friends, because that's what I love to do. That's what my band does. Even if we don't have gigs, we still get together on a Friday evening or a Saturday evening, drink some beers and play music and pretend to be rock stars. And that's what this game allows you to do. The other thing that this game does that is just fantastic is that they continued to release hundreds and hundreds of additional songs. And it's funny because as much as I spent on the original game, I've actually spent probably three or four times as much downloading amazing songs by, oh geez, I could list them off here, like Opeth is on there, uh, there's Def Leppard, there's there's Dream Theater, there's pretty much every band that I love is in this game and can be downloaded. Number eight. Ultima 4 is a really, really interesting game, I think, to talk about in modern times because, to be quite honest, it looks incredibly dated. And I think if you're not familiar with the series and specifically this game, I think a lot of younger gamers look at this and go, what's the big deal about this? I mean, is it just nostalgia? You know, is that the reason why people still talk about this game? And yes and no. Yes, the, the, the graphics are really, really rudimentary, 
But man, I'll tell you what, what was amazing about this game is that it threw out most of the rules at the time and just had this amazing role playing experience. See, the deal is when most games have that typical big bad guy that's trying to destroy the land and kill all the people, this game did that in the first three of them, but then in the fourth one, it completely changed it up. Basically, the land is in peace and people are kind of lethargic. They're, they don't really have any directions in their life. And so Lord British summons the, the Avatar to come to this land and, and basically show people how to live. And you have to, in this game, go through and discover the eight different virtues that are are required for a, a person to be a good person. Don't steal, tell the truth, help out your neighbor, things like that. And what's amazing about this game is that it tempts you all the time. I remember very vividly playing this game and my avatar is starving to death. Like I, I'm low on health, I need food badly, and I stumble into this town and one of the NPCs has food there and they turn their back. And the game's like, you can take the food, but that's stealing. And I thought that was so interesting at the time when most games allow you to walk into someone's home and if they've got like a, you know, a, a dresser drawers there, you can kind of open it up and just take whatever you want. In this game, you have to, you have to act with a conscience. And it was so mind blowing at the time. Number seven. I want to talk about one of the greatest platforming series of all time happens to be on the PlayStation 2, and that is the Ratchet and Clank series. The first three, in my opinion, are masterpieces, especially the third one, Up Your Arsenal. Now, sure, sure, we've had a lot of games before this where we had furry creatures as the, the main character, and you had games with humor in them, and you had games that had 3D platforming and, and all that stuff, but this game, for whatever reason, it just got all the elements right, especially for me. And the other thing it did that I really enjoyed is that the weapons in this game are awesome. You have some crazy ass weapons in this game that are so much fun to use, to play with, to level up. It never gets old. But let's back up a second. I mean, it's not just the weapons that I love, although those are excellent, but it's really every aspect of this game I think is just fantastic and totally top notch. For one, I mean, the graphics are fantastic and they run flawlessly. They're so fast. I mean, the frame rate's super high. The animation's great. Like I mentioned, the characters and the humor is hilarious, especially Quark. And also, uh, you know, the, the main evil guy, Nefarious, on this is just awesome too. It's There's this humor all throughout this game. It, it, it bleeds personality and uh, it's just a joy. And there's just a ton of stuff to do, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna kind of tell on Paul's wife, Liz, who uh, who loves these games so much because on her PlayStation 2 memory card, each one of these games literally has hundreds and hundreds of hours on it. As a matter of fact, I think it's the third one, Up Your Arsenal, which has 300 hours that she has put into it. Simply playing through the game, leveling up her weapons, finding all the little bolts that are hidden within it, it's amazing how much quality stuff is packed into these three games. Number six. All right, well, here's the deal. I love arcade racing games, and I'm gonna say it, Burnout 3 and Burnout Revenge are the pinnacle of arcade racing games during the PlayStation 2 original Xbox era. And quite frankly, as of the making of this video, I don't think they've ever been topped. They are so freaking awesome. And to give you an idea just how much of a burnout nut I am, I mean, I've got them all. I've got Burnout 1, 2, I've got 3, Revenge, I've got the PSP versions, I've also got Burnout Paradise, which is also a very good game, and you know, a bunch of other ones. Like, I've got them on the DS, I've got them on the iPad, but it really is Burnout 3 and Revenge that just got it right. I mean, the speed is there, the graphics are great. I love, I love Crash Mode, man. Crash Mode was perfected in these games. They were so much fun. They're, it's like a puzzle, just trying to figure out how to do is, you know, the maximum amount of damage. And everything was so great. I just, I don't know why EA and Criterion don't bring this back. What do I gotta do? And now number five. 
Well, this game's not gonna be much of a surprise to people who watch my channel because I show it in my intro, and that is Hero by Activision on the mighty Atari 2600. So here's the deal. I know that a lot of games that are gonna be in someone's top 10 of all time are going to be, they're gonna be biased, right? Because, you know, a lot of these games are games we played when we were very young. And for a lot of people, that's going to be one of the Nintendo franchises like the Super Mario series or, or Zelda or something like that. And that makes total sense. Well, for me, the very first game I was really passionate about was Hero on the Atari 2600 because frankly, it was really amazing for the time. Not only that, it was just frankly amazing on the Atari, which was not a very complex console, yet this was a pretty complex game. The thing is, you didn't really see a lot of platforming games on the Atari 2600 because it was really hard to do. It wasn't designed to do platforming games. As a matter of fact, I think growing up, I really only remember Pitfall and Pitfall 2, and those weren't quite as cool as this game because in this game you had lasers, you had dynamite, you had a little, little helicopter pack on the back. It was so much more exciting than Pitfall. Number four. It may seem like I talk about Planescape Torment a lot, and that's because I tend to, because I think this is one of the best role-playing games ever made. I love this game so much. You start this game as the nameless one, this guy who, for whatever reason, can't stay dead, and you wake up in the morgue, and next to you is Mort, this flying skull that appears to be your friend, and he mentions that written or carved in your back are some notes, and that kind of sets you off on your journey to figure out what exactly is going on. Now, the number one standout feature for this game is that everything you think you know about all the cliches that are part of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, all the things you've just you've heard about a million times, this game tries to throw all of that on its ear and be something incredibly original. For instance, a lot of games like this will send you on typical fetch quests. Go get this thing for me so I can give you something that will unlock the door. In this game, you have that, but it is never as simple as that sounds. Also, the dialogue in this game is fantastic, and as a matter of fact, a lot of things can be solved simply by using your brain and talking to people. It's so rewarding. Number three. I know a lot of people are gonna be very surprised to see that I have a snowboarding game in my top 10 games of all time. And to be honest, I'm actually really surprised too. The SSX series, especially Tricky and 3, are some of the best games ever made. So what makes them so special? Well, for one, this doesn't try to be a realistic game in any way. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it really just tries to be fun, fun to the maximum. And it's always done that, and I've always really appreciated that. But, but more than that though, everything about it's great. The graphics are great, the controls are great, the tricks are great. In Tricky especially, the characters are really awesome, really fun to play, great voiceovers. I actually like the entire series. I actually have most of the games. I mean, I have the PSP version and I actually have the Engage version. So <laughs> I tell you how nuts I am for the series, but really SSX3 is the pinnacle because again, they got everything right and they did something really fun, which is they made the entire mountain one continuous run if you want it to be. And you know, it makes sense too why I like this series because if you know that I like arcade racing games, this is an arcade racing game. It just happens to have amazing tricks, great level design, and, and a lot of fun. Number two. The original Deus Ex, when it came out, just completely blew my mind. I had never played a first person shooter like this that incorporated so much role-playing elements in it and also a sense of choice. This was an amazing game when it first came out. I remember the first time I played this game and you're presented with a choice through dialogue that was really meaningful. And I remember just being like awestruck, like, what do I do? I mean, this was one of the first games that I played where I was really sort of like, wow, the developers are giving me a choice here and the story is going to change based on that. And it was just, it was just so mind blowing and liberating at the time. You know, once you play a game like this, it's really hard to go back. 
The other elements of Deus Ex that I really, really like, and I think the reason why this game sticks with me is because it does some other things really well too. For instance, the combat is very dynamic, so you can play this game completely stealthy if you want to, which is usually how I like to do it. But you can also specialize in heavy weapons and go that route and play this shooting everything that you see. Also, I'm a big fan of science fiction, cyberpunk, and stories about conspiracy theories. And man, this game has all of that in spades. And so it just really speaks to me and a lot of the things that I like in movies and books and video games. And I think that's the reason why even to this day, I'm still really excited to play it. Ooh, I can feel the anticipation. And finally, number one. Oh man, number one has to be Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic by BioWare. I originally played this game on the original Xbox and I loved every single minute of it. You have to think back at the time and remember that Yes, there were a lot of Star Wars games and some of them were pretty good. Yeah, I'm looking at you, TIE Fighter. But there really wasn't any great role-playing games on the PCs or the consoles. And when this game came out, I think a lot of people like me were like, I don't know, you know, how are they gonna do it? Well, BioWare did it really, really well. This is such a great role-playing game. It just happens to be a Star Wars one. And like a lot of other games in this list, one of my favorite things about this is that it gives you complete choice. You get to choose the path that you want your character and your team to go on. And I just found that to be very fascinating. This game allows you to play as a Jedi or as a Sith. You can be very good or incredibly evil. <laughs> And uh, it just blew my mind at the time. It was so much fun. In addition to that though, the combat also is really solid. It's turn-based and it, it's, it's something that you can, you can think about, you can kind of plan your moves, you can plan your strategy. And I really, really appreciate that. I'm not one who likes a lot of real-time combat. Also, this game has a lot of memorable characters and especially some of the characters that join your, your party. Specifically, there's a robot that I think is just one of the best Star Wars characters ever made. He's, his name is HK-47. He's this evil robot that hates everything that is living. And his dialogue is fantastic. A bunch of great characters in this game. And again, it just really fits into the Star Wars universe so well. It was such a surprise. All right, well, there's my top 10 games of all time. As you can imagine, that was very painful trying to narrow all those games down to just 10. I could have easily done a video that's like a top 50 or a top 100. But you know what? Going through this process was really interesting because while the PC was my platform of choice, especially in the 90s and the early 2000s, it was really obvious that the PlayStation 2 was a very close second for me. As a matter of fact, you're going to see at the end here during the honorable mentions that so many great games that I just love came out on the PlayStation 2. I'd love to know what you guys think. Is the PC your, your, your platform of choice or did you have a special console that just seemed to have so many of your favorite games of all time? I'd love to know. Please post a comment below. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel and thank you very much for subscribing. Take care. Honorable mentions here. Let's add some River Raid, why don't we? And we got to add some original NES games here. And then how about a Gold Box Advanced Dungeons and Dragons game? Always awesome. Stunts, D does anybody remember Stunts? This game was killer. Here are my two favorite Super Nintendo games. And Chrono Cross, as well as Xenogears on the PS1. Time Splitters, the best one, Future Perfect. And we gotta throw in some Sierra, Space Quest 4. Ah, Baldur's Gate 2, love this game. Jack and Daxter series, pretty awesome. Oh, SOCOM 2, I love this game. Do, 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 More PlayStation 2 awesomeness. I played so much Puzzle Quest when this first came out. Oh, dude, and Lumines, yes. And of course, the holy trilogy of Grand Theft Auto games. So much time spent in these. I can't forget the Wii. 
and also the DS. This is a fantastic version. And some more modern RPGs. Skyrim, uh, ooh, Mass Effect 2, love that game. On the PlayStation 3, hands down, gotta be Uncharted 2. Oh man, the GameCube kicked ass. So many good games on that. Paper Mario, what else we got here? Ikaruga, I like my shoot 'em ups and an Eternal Darkness, oh, so good. Wait, what, more Atari 2600? Hell yeah! And then finally, what, wait, what? Oh wait, how, no, wait, how'd that get in there? Oh well. All right guys, well that's it. Thanks for subscribing and check out my Facebook page and Twitter. Take care.